Let's talk about doors and boarding defense. And we'll start with an understanding of what enemies are trying to do when they get on your ship. Uh, enemies board into a random room and if there's more than can fit in the room they overflow. Uh, and then they will go into the nearest system room and attack it or attack your crew in it first. Um, there are some complexities to do with um, multiple enemy crew uh, trying to seek out rooms that are not going to get them outnumbered. So if you have two enemies boarding you, um, at least in some situations, they might avoid going to a large room like shields or weapons and instead go to the smaller rooms. Um, equally, if you have larger boarding parties on your ship, they might seek out the larger rooms. Um, they also follow mind-controlled crew around as their leader, kind of. So there's some complexities to do with the AI. Um, but this crew is definitely going to go into weapons. And then they start fighting with our crew here. And if we leave the room, they'll start attacking the system. And they make progress there. If I go back in the room, the progress is halted. Now we can vent them out. Um, they won't actually move if our crew is in the room, but they will move before this gets uh, down to suffocation levels. And that's something I want you to remember for later. Small details. You see they're, they're already moving, even though they're not taking damage yet. Um, I think this might be around 10% O2. Suffocation damage is 5% or lower. Uh, we didn't quite manage to catch them there. And you can also see that they're walking straight through our doors because we only have level 1 doors. One very common mistake that I see among beginners a lot is that they like to do this. They send all their crew into the med bay, they open all the doors, and then they just shut the doors around the med bay. And this seems like a really clever tactic, um, but it's really not. It's a very bad idea. Uh, in most circumstances. Now in this case we might be alright because all our crew fit in the med bay. There isn't a hazard event like a solar flare. Um, there's no enemy ship firing on us but in a lot of circumstances this will be really bad. And depending on where these uh, enemies spawned, this fourth mantis might actually break a system uh, before we can stop it. You see they're gonna attack shields because there's nowhere else for them to go. And we will be alright, I think. Yeah, in this case, because they had to travel, they died. No, they broke the system. Okay, so that could have been your oxygen or your doors. And depending on your crew and the ship layout, that's a really serious problem. Could just be a soft lock. Um, so basically just never do this. Yes, there are circumstances you can get away with it, um, but it's never really a good tactic. Imagine you had an enemy ship fighting you. Um, well, now you've lost all of your manning bonuses and you have no air on your ship. Having air on your ship is a good thing. Uh, it makes you much less likely to just die. What I would recommend instead is a more measured approach to dealing with borders, which is to say you only vent the parts of your ship that you actually need to, and you don't overreact so massively. Um, ideally, in a fight, you wouldn't even pull crew away from important stations like weapons and piloting and engines, um, but you might have to in practice. Now, one thing you can do is uh, actually start a crew indoors at the start of the fight, depending on how many crew you have um, and what ship you're playing. In this case, I don't want to put my weapons crew in there. I value having the weapons charging faster. I could put my engines crew in, but they're a really long way away. Um, so if I want to, the crew member I could use on this ship is a pilot, and we just have to pause before they leave the room, uh, and then jump, and they will arrive at the room. They're actually walking there during the FTL jump. Uh, FTL jumps last for two seconds, uh, and that's how much uh, progress crew make in moving. Now we start the fight with upgraded doors. The downside of doing this, of course, is that uh, it's very easy to forget. So you're going to feel like a real numpty if um, you start a fight like this, you don't get boarded, and then you forget to move your crew into pilot and you have zero evasion for the whole fight. Uh, so do remember that you've done this. Anyway, here come the Mantis. And uh, now that we have upgraded doors, we can slow them down a bit. 
By the way, the uh, number of hits that a door takes depends on the strength of the blast doors, like what level of doors you have, as well as um, the difficulty that you're playing on. Um, so in hard mode, um, these doors are only going to last six hits by the enemies. Um, on easy, that would be 12. And uh, I do have a table that I'll link to in the description. Now enemies attack about once a second, it is randomized. So I think on average uh, they take around 1.1 seconds or so to attack, uh, but it will vary for sure. You can see every time they attack um, you get this red flash on the door, so you can even count them. Uh, and you can also hear them. Now these enemies are trying to leave, um, also those ones are. Um, probably this room is not actually yet out of oxygen. Um, but they've decided that they want to meet up in a big room, so they're all going for weapons. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Now they are. And now one thing to notice is I can't close this door yet. Um, when doors are hit, um, they retain their damage, and once they are broken, they stay stuck open for seven seconds. Uh, and then you'll be able to close them. See, this is uh, what doors look like when they are stuck open, they're not under my control anymore. And I don't really want to fight these mantis directly, so I just move. I'll show you one more advanced thing that you can do here. Um, you can distract them. So maybe I didn't want my weapons to get broken. I can just put a crew member in there, or maybe more crew to spread the damage. And this gives me time to uh, vent this room. The further away you get from an airlock, the more slowly a room will vent. Um, so sometimes you need to do this to prevent taking system damage. Um, we could also vent through here, actually. Or even here. But this is good enough. And now I'm going to shut these doors. Oh, which way is that? That's showing a shut animation. Now it's showing an open animation. So now I can see uh, that I did in fact close it. And here's a little trick you can use. Um, if we keep moving into the room, then the enemies are going to keep changing their mind about what they want to do. As soon as I move a crew in the room, now they have to attack them. So you can just keep moving out. You can also uh, sometimes cause them to change their mind. So if, if there's more than one uh, target room that they might approach, that is to say a room that is equally far away, um, then they might switch uh, because they're randomly assigned each time. Uh, each time they switch from attacking a crew member to wanting to attack a room. So you see how they're changing their targets on the doors here. Uh, but what we're doing here is just delaying them and confusing them. We take some suffocation damage. We have to be a bit careful because there's four mantis in the room as well. That's enough. But when you um, combine these tactics, you can really slow them down. And we can vent a bit more from here. Um, one thing I might do indeed is uh, maybe I want to reoxygenate this part of the ship. Just vent uh, through this part. It's worth considering when you are dealing with the boarding defense. Um, do you still need all of this path vented? Should you maybe, depending on what's going on in, in a fight or whatever, should you maybe start reoxygenating some parts? And we can do the same thing. Or we could just let them in the med bay. And there you go. So we dealt with them quite easily, um, and we didn't lose control of our ship at any point there. One thing to consider is that you might not always want to vent an enemy out the room uh, at the fastest possible speed. Um, because, for example, here they've gone into artillery. Uh, if we vent them out of artillery, then they're going to go into either oxygen or engines. Uh, and that means that uh, we'll lose our engines manning bonus if they go in engines. 
I mean, of course, this isn't a real issue here. There's only one human. We could go and fight them. Uh, we have plenty of crew. But uh, all I'm saying is that you don't always want to vent at the fastest possible speed. So you can get a room quite pink. So it's ready to vent. And then just leave it with the door closed. And you can open this a little bit before this gets too low. Uh, you can even try to mess with them if you time it really, really well by switching off the oxygen, waiting for them to flee, then turning it back on. Uh, and if they haven't reached the door to attack it or, or go through it, um, then they'll actually stay in the room. And we can keep them moving around like this. Well, they did even turn back there. I'm not quite sure the exact circumstances in which they will uh, keep turning back. But you see, they're, they're not making much progress. A related point that's useful to know is that hacking doors are level 3. Uh, so on hard difficulty, they take uh, 10 shots to break down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, eight, nine. Um, now I'm actually going to stop and I want to show you why. Doors store their health, as it were. Um, they store the damage that they've taken forever unless you make an FTL jump. It doesn't matter how long we wait, because I've already attacked this door nine times, I can instantly go in with just one hit. Uh, and then, ten, and then uh, seven seconds later, this door is going to close. This is quite a useful tactic to know um, when dealing with hacking, because you can break out a room, or rather prepare to break out it, um, before the situation gets really bad. Um, that might mean all of a sudden maybe you get boarded into here, or you have fires starting in here and your crew needs to get out, maybe the room gets damaged and you need to rush people in. Um, so this is a bit of prep that you can do. Okay, there's no reason that Stealth B is up on the screen right now, except to serve as a general purpose symbol of warning and dread. Um, the rest of the video is going to get a bit esoteric and slow, um, because all I'm going to be doing is demonstrating how far you can push boarding defense if you really need to. Um, there's not going to be any new information really, um, no sort of bonus tips at the end of the video. Um, so quite likely the majority of players would probably want to stop the video now. Um, but if you're really into this stuff hardcore, um, then by all means carry on watching. And uh, in any case, I hope that the video has helped you. Let's try a more extreme example to show you um, just how far you can take boarding defense if you really, really need to. Um, and a good example of this would be NGB. Um, if you've decided to sell all the drones, and specifically the anti-personnel drone, this is quite the risky move um, in the sense that it's a lot easier to defend against borders um, if you have this. Um, but maybe selling this is what gets you a flak one. Uh, as well as your second shield. Um, so it's interesting to consider the possibility um, and interesting to try defending without it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is vent the engines <coughs> because uh, this is a four tile room, it's only got one hit point. Uh, I'd rather prevent that whole damage. Um, it's also going to be handy to be a little bit prevented um, as we'll see when we start the fight. Um, I will show you this with sensors uh, the first time, just so it makes more sense what's going on. Um, and we're going to try our hand against eight Mantis borders. You'll never see this many in the in the real game, but uh, just to see how we get on. As soon as we know it's a boarding event, um, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to vent a path to the med bay. Um, because of the bad layout of the ship, if I if I try to hold doors and it prevents me from using these airlocks, um, you know, unless I'm venting through the system my engine's in, um, and also because in this case we have so many borders, 
It's not going to be practical to use conventional boarding defense and just try to hold the door system. Um, let me just check that I did in fact open that door. It's showing the close animation, so I did. Um, oh, by the way, I normally move the NG into weapons, so I thought I'd do that during the FTL jump. I'm not going to vent this corner because I, I need to leave places on the ship where my NG can run and also where the enemies can go. I will turn off oxygen. Where are they? Okay, we've got two here. Two in med bay. Two in this room above med bay and um, two in the sensors. Not a great disposition. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to sacrifice piloting, by the way, with this many borders. Okay, the reason these two started moving is not that this room ran out of air. Um, it's that these two decided to go into drones, and uh, these two decided that they were going to be um, following these. I think. Are they going to shields? No, they're going to drones. And I uh, have to let them break at least some of the drone system, I think. So now we've got the uh, med bay vented. I actually want to start reoxygenating some rooms. Because we need to give them places to go. Or we won't be able to manipulate them. Okay, so I've got control of these two mantis now. They're trying to leave the med bay, but every time my crew goes in, they change their minds and they want to fight my crew. Uh, did I accidentally open that door? Yes. I have to be real careful in this kind of situation. You see they were heading into shields, now they've changed their mind. And I'm using this to uh, deal damage to them through suffocation. I think I leave these four in there for now. I want more of my ship to have air on it. The NG, of course, isn't taking any damage from suffocation because uh, they're in the med bay at the time. That exactly equals out the suffocation damage. Okay, they've destroyed piloting. I think I might want to maintain drones. I'm not sure if I can. I maybe don't want to uh, dance across these two. Like I can't keep using this room now they're coming through it. Okay, now I should be able to uh, vent out drones. Maybe start on shields as well.
we can kill off just two of them, it will help a great deal. Yeah, because now these enemies are actually staying in this room because they have nowhere to go. I'm a little surprised by that. Maybe the oxygen, I think the oxygen levels up here are not quite high enough, so they should move any moment. Is that door open? Yeah, they're moving now. We want to keep them in the med bay. Um, but maybe some others have been assigned. Okay, so we weren't able to kill them off. It's a little shame. Go down here. We'll work on these other ones. Probably need to start venting into sensors as well. Okay, now they're on the move again. Close shields, let that reoxygenate a bit. It does get quite confusing when you have this many enemies, especially because they're. Uh, changing their priorities as a group. Okay, they're all going into engines, I think. Or are they going to oxygen? Got control of these two again for now. Hmm. I guess I can vent them in this direction. Do I want to vent drones? I think I'm making life a little bit difficult for myself trying to protect drones as well. Might just be possible. Well, they do need places to go. One, that's like two, four, two, four, six, eight. They should have enough by now. Maybe not quite yet, because these are staying. I know they're moving now. Hopefully we can kill these two off.
can always um, watch the crew damage bars over the systems to see how much time you've got before they damage the system bar. What are we doing for health? 81, that's not bad. Oh, also, I should already have closed the drones there. One Mantis down. Let's open up the shields. I can provide three rooms for them to go and I'll be alright. Well, let's not do that just yet. This mantis dead. Close the shield doors again. Okay, that mantis should be dead now. Now I think we have control of this pair. I can open up these rooms. Oh, we've lost control of them. They're swapping. given them enough. Possibly not. This room could be awkward uh, below the med bay. But now I have, surely. Okay, so I'm going to temporarily duck into shields because I want to let these ones go somewhere that's not this room. play dodge the mantis. They do have enough places now to go, I'm fairly sure. So we should be all right. Okay, they're leaving the med bay. One thing I can maybe show off here is, um, I'm not sure if, it, if I will have time to do it, um, but how we can actually heal a bit. And they won't come into the med bay if they have alternative targets, um, even when it's a bit above suffocation. One, two, they should have enough rooms here. The 
And now I think I want to start bouncing them back and forth. again so I didn't give them quite enough oh am I gonna oh let's try kicking them out of sensors let's try it oh, we've nearly killed them now Uh, this position is slightly dicey. I think I accidentally left this door open. Yep, yeah, that's the that's a problem. See how important it is uh, to know which doors are open. I think here I just make a dash for the piloting for a moment, confuse them. go back into the med bay and now we've won okay there you go that's how you can defeat eight mantis with a single ng and no drones on ngb um, I will do the same thing without sensors now, but I'll do it speeded up because it'll be really boring to watch twice. Just you know, just to kind of prove the point. Um, all you're doing without sensors is is trying to keep track of where they are based on doors opening and closing, based on where you know they should be, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, this room is now not hurting the NG. There's no suffocation damage. Um, but the Mantis still treat it like an airless room. Or, or any boarders treat it like an airless room. Because the oxygen is low enough. So you can use that trick sometimes to, to heal like this. If you're really under the cosh. Of course, it only works if I've actually left them enough airspace. And you can um, potentially just toggle the oxygen on and off sometimes in this situation to keep it at that level of O2. So we seem to have reached some kind of stabilization. Uh, in this case without the sensors, uh, this time round anyway, I um, opted to let them destroy my drone control. Um, with this many borders it does seem to make it quite a bit easier and after all uh, the reason you're in this this bind anyway is that you sold your anti-personnel drone in the first place. So we can just heal like this and they're never coming in the med bay. Thank you. 
Anyway, I guess I should finish them off. One clue that you can get that you've defeated the borders um, is when you get that bing from the um, the jump indicator. Um, so obviously that's a bit of a silly example um, in the sense that while it is possible to defend against that many borders, uh, it is still dicey. And uh, I'm not saying that it would be okay necessarily if you had a bad ship fight. Um, so if you are doing things like trading your anti-personnel drone away for something, you want it to be something good. Um, maybe a flak one, for example, you could argue that um, if the ship fight is dangerous in the first place, then the flak one is going to do a decent job of making it less dangerous, um, so that the combined threat of the ship fight and the borders um, is hopefully more manageable. But uh, anyway, yeah, um, hopefully that's helpful, so you can see how you can manage borders uh, on your ship.